Attending a private institution of education has its price. Of all the ways to obtain a college degree, attending a private school is the most expensive route. There are many questions to be asked. Why do it? What justifies the cost? Where does all the tuition money go? And last but not least, why apply to a private college or university? With these questions in mind, we will find the answer with faculty and select students from Ithaca College located in Ithaca, New York. Um, I have no clue where my tuition is going. I have no idea where my personal yeah, tuition is going. Um, I assume it's going towards things that the school needs to buy that are important, or maybe not so important, like decorative things. I think I have a kind of sense of where a lot of, a decent amount of it goes, such as paying for the professors um, who give us raise, I mean, they get a raise every year, most likely. Um, just like things that are related to academics, like extras, such as like paying for the library, all the people that work in the library. I guess, uh, I mean, a lot of places, dining hall, facilities, um, obviously where I'm living, I'm living in the garden apartments. Um, so, you know, all the furniture and upkeep and... Oh yeah, definitely. They've got a very nice, uh, very nice rec center. They've got awesome food here. They've got all sorts of things that you won't find at other colleges. I mean, I also work at one of the radio stations as a DJ, and that's probably one of the best stations in the entire country among college stations. It's awesome. I think it's worth it. Um, I really I really enjoy the school. Uh, I know I'm getting a good education. Uh, I love it here. I have a lot of good friends. Um, it, is, it is very expensive, and um, I, I feel like I am getting my money's worth uh, most of the time. <laughs> I would say so, yeah. I mean, I do wish it wasn't so expensive. Like, it is a really expensive school, and I'm gathering a huge amount of debt, which is not going to be fun to pay off. But I do think they provide a lot for us. I think it's definitely overpriced, but to an extent, it's it's worth paying all the money to be here because of all the facilities that they provide us with. I think it depends on the program you're going into, but, I mean, I'm in park, so... I think it's worth it. I'm hoping it's worth it. Um, some of the professors I've met or have had for classes seem very involved in their field. It probably is a good, a good investment. I just, it's just hard, you know, every semester being like, oh, I'm going into so much debt just, you know, to go to classes and learn and learn sometimes some of the same things I've already learned in other classes. Um, but I, I think down the line, hopefully, I think it is worth it. Oh, I, I think it's both, but it's hard to separate those things because, um, especially on a residential campus, so much learning happens outside of the classroom. Uh, I think in a private um, college, we often have facilities, programming, clubs, specialized dormitories that uh, one might think is part of lifestyle but they're usually pretty intentionally designed so that they're part of living and learning uh, tied together. So um, I think that lifestyle contributes to learning uh, as long as it's not just mere luxury items. Uh, I think that the education is, well, superior. Superior, I suppose, to what? To a bare bones education. Um, let me take an example of the next class that I teach, which will be a seminar-type course called Great American Speeches. Uh, it's a seminar-type course. It is small in enrollment, relatively speaking. I have 18 students in that class. Uh, and generally speaking, at tuition-dependent institutions, the smaller the class, the more it costs to teach, if you will. Uh, in terms of your second phrase, though, was superior lifestyle. Here we have the opportunities for fitness, wellness, 
uh, outside exercise, inside exercise, swimming pools, um, psychology, psychological counseling, uh, other kinds of counseling, academic support. Those things contribute to both lifestyle, I think, and also um, academic accomplishment. Well, I think they're paying for a superior education, but of course, in being able to pay for that superior education, they're probably coming from a superior lifestyle. And uh, are you getting uh, a superior education because the education is superior, or are you getting a superior education because you're just smarter than uh, you, if you went to some other place? So that's, that's a tough one. But I do happen to think the education is, is that, that, in essence, the cost does reflect the quality. I would say there's a tendency of focusing um, too much on the luxury part because it's very hard to um, provide good education and it's hard to measure it. But luxury is quite visible and it's easy to do at a sports facilities, have a nice dining hall, or a dorm room. It's very visible. So um, that's, it's easy for school to do. At a number of institutions, like Ithaca College, we have beautiful health and fitness facilities. And that might be looked at as just, you know, sort of a luxury um, if we consider that we're educating people in a holistic way, I think fitness is as important as learning math, uh, maybe more important for a person's uh, whole lifestyle. And we, we believe that we're educating the individual, not just in a discipline or for careers, but for a rich and fulfilling life. I think some of what are considered amenities improve the quality of education. I've spoken about some of them. The question is, should we, or a question, should we as, as an academic institution let students fend for themselves about those things? But in fact, it really what we've decided is to provide a fair amount of support. Some of it is academic support. Some of it, incidentally, is mandated by law. Uh, students, for example, with disabilities are uh, have some protections under the law and we are required to extend support to them. Contrast that, for example, with uh, psychological counseling. Not required under the law, but the data suggest that increasingly students are entering college with uh, needs, let's say, that really at a residential institution have to be met. We don't have to have a climbing wall in the fitness center, but a counseling center? Yeah, we need one of those. And we do, and we have a good one. Uh, the Office of Counseling and Wellness uh, provides uh, counseling support services for students. Uh, primarily to help students uh, succeed academically. We know that life can be very difficult uh, at times for young adults who are transitioning from you know, adolescence into young adulthood. And when those uh, life challenges get in the way, um, students need a, a safe place to get their uh, emotional needs met. And so our goal is to really help uh, students achieve the academic success that they want. This school has a ton of student organizations that uh, students can uh, involve themselves in that provide them not only social connection but engagement in something with others that, uh, that is meaningful to the student. And, and so the, the goal is to really look at the, the person and their entire life and identify those obstacles that might be you know, getting in the way of them experiencing a, a healthier mood state. If we take this to the extreme, an online university, all right, you can get 
that's stripped with the absolutely down to nothing, right? But delivering knowledge, there's nothing else. There's no dorms, you know, no facilities. And that does work for some people. Um, an online education at a, at a very low cost can work for some people if what they're looking for in education is specific delivery of knowledge. Uh, I think what most undergraduates are looking for is four years in which to sort of find themselves, to meet new people, to develop new social relationships, to explore areas that they would not have thought of on their own in isolation. Um, to be able to make sort of a transition between living at home to living completely on their own? I would envision it the way I went to college. <laughs> I didn't live on campus. I walked to college, which happened to be some, you know, walking distance away, a mile away or whatever. I lived at home. And so it's a, it's a completely different conception of what college means. Uh, I do think that students who come to Ithaca College are privileged in the best sense. I do think that. It is uh, a special place. It's a terrific place. But could it be bare bones? <clears throat> yes, it could be bare bones. Uh, would it be the same kind of experience? No, of course not. The marketplace seems to be saying that it doesn't want bare-bones institutions. Or if it does, then students have, have options. Uh, often, for example, state institutions have fewer, let's call them amenities. Wow, I think there would be a, uh, a big increase in the number of applicants. Uh, if those applicants were accepted, then I think you would have uh, what you'd expect, very big increases in class size uh, accompanied by a diminution of uh, student-teacher interaction one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, if the college just cut its uh, tuition and got rid of the amenities, then I would, I might be really hard-pressed to say why would you come here? Uh, I think we would tend to lose that aspect that attracts students. I think two really significant differences uh, from the, in the private education. One is the uh, small class size and interaction with the professors. So once a student discovers his or her sort of calling, as it were, there's a chance to work uh, closely, at the, usually at the upper division level, with a professor, um, something that you might or might not get at a public institution. But uh, probably as important is the, the contacts. Uh, your fellow classmates w are the beginning of your lifelong network. And those are just easier to make and keep if class sizes are 20 as, as, as opposed to class sizes of 250. Private school tend to have a smaller class um, and then um, professors are more uh, available to the students. I think that's the general impression of people who choose a private um, education. I agree with that. I think uh, for undergraduates, if they can afford it, a private education um, probably affords them more choice and more opportunities to develop them as a well-rounded person overall. Um, probably a lot more individual attention at the undergraduate level. Um, I think those things change a lot in graduate school because you are going to get individual attention at a graduate level, even at a very large state institution. Um, but I think for many students the, the question is um, what sort of relationships do they want to be able to develop with faculty? Um, do they want the guarantee of being able to take a, a lot of different kinds of courses and have access to things um, which are getting to be increasingly difficult at a public institution? State governments are in such crisis. There's an awful lot of cutback. And some of those cutbacks mean that students actually can't get the courses they need to graduate in four years. And that unfortunately happens, is happening in increasingly uh, 
higher frequency in many public institutions.